You know, this is a fast-paced, one-hour, informal, informative, fun meeting. We have people in the audience already here who have set the clock for 8 o'clock, and when that goes off, we're done, even if we're in mid-sentence. Um, and then after that, you can still visit if you so desire, but we have to put the room back to the spotless condition that it was in earlier. So, um, my name is Kitty Doherty. I've been working on this stuff for about, since 1982. Um, and what I'm trying to do now is segue it into the new and improved park system that the town will be taking care of. Up until now, it's been different open space groups and conservation groups and civic groups and nonprofits that have done things for the community to be able to bring all of the um, park lands that you see to this particular point. But it's an awesome platform. And we have some of our town mothers and fathers here. Would all the town mothers and fathers raise their hands? <laughs> That's all right. So we have up back um, the town manager, Michael Dutton, who is going to introduce the new guy. <laughs> and the new guy is minding the sign-in sheet. So you really want to know the new guy, OK? Michael. Me? Yes. No. First uh, names yeah. only here. Thank you. Um, so thanks to Katie for uh, pushing this and uh, really getting this going, uh, not only tonight's uh, session, but uh, for the last, how many decades? Four decades. A lot of time and effort. So um, not to interrupt um, too much of the one hour, but I do want to let people know that um, my focus um, in Obviously, every, my focus is always pending uh, appropriation from the town council, but my focus uh, over the next year, probably two years, is really to make some, some substantial improvements to the park system um, and devote some money so that we can um, actually take care of the parks a little bit better than we have uh, thus far. I know there are some park stewards in the room who have done yeoman's work uh, with very little credit um, over the years. Uh, to keep the parks up and going. Um, and for that, I, I thank you. And uh, in the future, uh, we will continue to look for um, continue to look for for volunteers to maintain and, and upkeep and, and uh, maintain trails, upkeep parks, and so forth. Uh, we'll do it in what I hope will be an organized fashion. Um, and uh, sure and we'll begin to really screen. spread. Uh, the message about how important these parks are not only to the residents of the who are here, but uh, quite frankly, it's a very important, a very important component of our economic development uh, initiatives and a very important uh, component of our community development initiatives, uh, which are equally, if not more important, than, than our economic development initiatives. Uh, uh, under the screen. With that said, I'm not sure enough way more time than. Uh, it's just a whole uh, but I'll ask uh, Jennifer Burke. Well, well, it's not showing us. Uh, Michael's done. Uh, Jennifer's our community and economic development director. As uh, Councillor Colin Boda said in the last council meeting, there's a reason that we say community and economic development because really it's two more seats up there, uh, too. In any, any uh, town, certainly uh, Bridgewater. Uh, Jennifer Burke, uh, can you introduce these? See, we do have town mothers and fathers. I told you that. <laughs>
Now, that's good because Steve is one of the persons that the park stewards and the park lands and all will be under, but also when we have the new hire, and my husband said I can't talk with my hands. Um, <laughs> when we have the new hire for the chief steward, the chief steward will be working under Steve and then also be the face that the volunteers will start to work with in each of the individual parks. And one of the things that we want to do tonight is share where the six first park, the first layer of parks, the first six that we have put together, um, they do have site design and do have guidance documents in place that were approved back in the olden days by the Conservation Commission. So it's chipped in stone like that was kind of an order of conditions. And then also we have for the next session, and I'll make this closing announcement now because when the clocks go, when those timers go off and it's 8 o'clock, we can't say anything else as part of the meeting. So I couldn't close the meeting when it goes off. Anyway, um, the next session will concentrate on some of the other packs that we haven't got in order yet that are not user friendly. Tonight we'll talk about the first six, which would be you want to go upstream or downstream? What is your choice? Down. Down. You want to go downstream. Okay, so we'll start at Ironworks, and then we'll go to Styles and Hart, then we'll go to Tuckerwood, then we'll go to Wyman, then we'll go to Titicate, and then we'll do Carver's Pond. And in the, in the, when we get to Styles and Hart, we have to talk about the half park that's there because the Town River Landing is going to be something that's fantastic, but right now it's only half of what we can use. Um, there is a canoe launch there, and some of the, some, like the salt shed is gone, but there's also weeds and debris. There is one wonderful bench, contribution of the Improvement Association, and there's a, the framework for signage there, contribution of public access. So we have bones and skeletons, but we do not have that in line yet. And there's got to be more town planning as to how that will all be designed. Anyway, um, so we'll go downstream. So we'll start at the Ironworks Park. Is Steve Black here? I'm way over here. <laughs> Look at you. There you are. Okay, here's another Steve. Steve has been the steward of Ironworks almost since the Mayflower landed. <laughs> You're off to a bad start. Yes. I don't know whether Steve wants to say three or four words, but he can if he would like. Only three or four? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm thrilled to have you on board, and I can't wait for the chief steward to come on board. Um, you know, a lot of the stewards that have been trying to keep the parks going have been like a piecemeal type of thing. I'm really looking forward to having some organization and some help from the towns. I think open spaces are just critical to our sense of community, our love of the outdoors, the ability to have a good lifestyle and all, and that's way more than three or four words, but I'm just really psyched for this coming new change. One of the things that I should mention before we go any further, we're going downstream, of course, but the Town River starts in our NIP on Lake Nipponicket, which is an area of critical environmental concern. It's 14 river miles plus or minus to get to the confluence of Matfield and the Taunton River. In 2003 or four, or right in that area, the Taunton River, by state legis by federal legislation, became a wild and scenic river under the National Park Service, which is under, of course, the Bureau of Depa the Department Bureau of Interior. Interior. Department of Interior. Department yeah. of Interior. You can find this online. This is the Taunton River Stewardship Plan. Um, it's talked about five or six different attributes, which would be recreation, agriculture, fisheries. Read it if you feel like it. There's no requirements. This is just an orientation so you'll know what's available. This, just look up the TaughtonRiver.org and this will be there. If anyone would like this particular book, they may have it because it is under revision and I soon will have a new one. Um, Harry Bailey is president of the Taunton River, Wild and Scenic Taunton River Stewardship Council. And I've been on that since its onset. And um, 
we go to meetings and we plan, but it's for the whole Taunton River system all the way down to Fall River. Now, the Taunton River also winds around Bridgewater, and some of our parklands are on the Taunton River. The Taunton River is 44 river miles long, and up until the, the state cha or the feds changed the law about needing a license, you could fish the whole Taunton River without a license. And that's just one of those little known facts, and that's because there were no impediments or dams that stopped you from from the tidal area, so anything that was coastal was still free. But now you have to pay because nothing's free. Anyway, going down along the Taunton River, it's 44 river miles down to Fall River, Mount Hope Bay, and there are nine communities on it plus two cities, and that would be Taunton and Fall River. So you can have that booklet if you would like. Um, in 1996, the then town's open space and recreation committee, and there are members of that here, along with me, it's. <laughs> we had done the open space plan, and one of the things in the open space plan was that we form a nonprofit to be able to assist and help and support what the town was attempting to do. And so a lot of the people on that committee then formed the 501c3 Natural Resources Trust of Bridgewater, as a nonprofit, and we started with the action plan that was in then that that um, open space plan. We have another um, a form of director of NRTB over there. We have James over here who was president. So we're all, you know, we're all here into in, intermingled. Um, with a nonprofit that was also instrumental in raising up the money to have the Conway School of Landscape Di Design put together an ecological study of the first six parklands. That included Titicate, it included um, Stiles and Hart, it included Tuckerwood, and it included Wyman Meadow. Um, and it also included the um, Ironworks Park. Place in here. Oh, our, the fellow that does a lot of our GS, GIS maps, like this one, and the new parkland map that you see, um, that's Scott. He's also a director of the NRTB. Um, some of the things that you will see on these was this. This is a vision that was even 15 years ago. A lot of time has gone by since these plans were put together. And that's one thing I need to stress to everybody. If you went out to buy a house and it was 20 years old, what were some of the first things you would do? Have an inspection. Yep, inspect it. What else? Have some plans. Get some plans. Maybe revamp the landscaping, repaint. Clean it up. Um, you would check it all over and maybe do some upgrades, cosmetic things, home improvements, because 20 years is a long time, right? So those wonderful plans that we had as NRTB gifted to the community, the design plans, the management plans, need to be reviewed. Some things in them have been accomplished, and some things languish for lack of it. Um, but on the other hand, now times are different. We have technology. Back then, we colored things with a large marks a lot. It was interesting because if you needed to have a scale on a map and you had a felt tip that was that big, suddenly, our town river was as big as the Mississippi, but no one realized that. Um, okay, thinking in terms of Bridgewater's parklands, the town river comes down through West Bridgewater, and then it goes back, well, comes from Bridgewater through West Bridgewater, and then back down. Its confluence with the Matfield River to become the Taunton River is at the feed store area. When you go over 104, heading out to Halifax, if you look to the left, you will see just about where you, the vision stops. It's just about where the two rivers come together, forming the top part of the Taunton. The Taunton River has 26 different tributary rivers, and our Town River and our Matfield River are two of the major ones. You can blurt out questions at any point, because this is informal, friendly, and... Um, can, I, can I just say, this is being videotaped? Yes. People should know that it's being taped. And please, when you speak into a microphone, or nobody's ever going to hear what you're saying, you may hear the video tape. I never thought of that. 
I, th I thought I was la. Oh my goodness. I hope that I hope that I haven't annoyed people that are watching this. Then um, I'm going to pass around a map that was done years ago, just to show you the vision of connecting the three Bridgewaters. Just, just take a look at it and keep circulating it. And also, this isn't something that we dreamed up just one night, like the whim of the week. Um, I think it was in 2008. This was a project that was started at the university. It's the Town River Landing and some of the goals. And on the back, there is a, the brochure that was with this map has been attached to the back. So you can take a chance and look at that. And then know that that was in 2008. And then we did the one from West Bridgewater, which is the same style. And then we did the one from East Bridgewater. Now, the major goals for West Bridgewater was to establish their CPA funding and also to acquire the Anderson Farm. They did it. The major goal for East Bridgewater was to have um, the, the Bannerman Farm or the Satum Rock Farm built into a senior center. They did it. Now, here's Bridgewater, the first in line in 2008, and we haven't did it yet. So um, we still have to keep working on that. If anyone would like to see this, it's the same thing, only smaller. Anyway, moving on. The next park, as we go downstream from Ironworks, which was gifted to the town. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. This is um, Scott's latest idea. We have at least two councillors in the room. Are there other councillors here? I'm glad that you're here. This is, it's good. <coughs> Make sure that each of them get one of these nice handouts. Because this is the first time we've been able to include the parklands with the, what precinct they're in. And so now you have someone on town government that represents that specific area. One of the goals in the master plan at one point was that every precinct would have its own, own open space and recreation park or open space parkland. So some have them now, some have two, some have some that aren't really user friendly any longer. But anyway, are those around enough? Okay. And it's also, we're putting them up there as we talk about them. So the Ironworks Park was um, a former industrial area. Um, you can check out on the town website and at the public library for individual parkland maps. We have all those? We saw them. We have our assistant over here who's been trying to unscramble some maps. And you're welcome, um, Steve, if you want these, you can have them. These are copies of what the NRTB had presented to the town years ago. Use them for Workup maps, drawings, um, drafts, because they never should look the same after 15 years. There should be some things that are new and improved. So, let's see. I can see where the iron works are. I will, maybe we'll just leave them on the floor up here, because it could be unruly with the microphones to have all of that shaking around. Anyway. Um, there's all sorts of environmental studies there that were done by the Conway School of Landscape Design and professional um, people put them together and then also the guidance documents for each of those sites. And I have copies of those. We blew this up so you can see the ironworks part better. We expanded it. <laughs> to give you an idea as to what the guidance documents look like, this is Titicate's conservation area plan. And you may keep these. I, I don't want you there. But anything in that notebook is sacred. No one's going to get that. Um, There's a lot of information there, but it's guidance documents. It's meant to be a living, um, active suggestion. Yeah. And the volunteers need to, go, need to know this as they work at it. And then I believe that's one of Steve's first 
challenges is to be able to help everyone update what would be individual on each site. This, so then going downstream from Ironworks, we come to Styles and Hart, which is right as you go up the hill on Bedford Street, Broad Street, Bedford Street, Broad Street, Broad Street, Broad Street. And we do have somebody here who has been minding that specific park. Harry, raise your hand. Um, although I told Harry I had a present for him. Now I have to find it. I know I have. Because Harry and the, and the Conservation Commission, back in the day, the Conservation Commission was very involved in this, and they have rotated different members. So not all of the members know that we have had the AmeriCorps here three times. And this is a, an account, Harry, of the AmeriCorps when they were here the first time for the trail that they built in four days that was awesome. Only now you can't find it because it's all overgrown. It needs to be done again. Um, a thousand hut at one point was the Plymouth County Agricultural Society Fairgrounds, and it had a grandstand. It had a quarter-mile trotting track. It had exhibit halls, and you can still go up into the woods there and see a row of sugar maples on either side of what had to have been a dirt road because nobody's going to go out in the woods and plant sugar maples in a row that would be probably 50, oh, maybe 30 feet apart. So it's some of the <clears> history there. And then around the turn of, eight, of 1900, a little bit before that, the Agricultural Society moved to a different location down off of South Street and brick companies, brick manufacturers, Factors then went into Styles and Hart. And today we still have in Bridgewater the last clay mining industry in the state for the Styles and Hart Brick Company, which is now located on Cook Street along the Taunton River. But when you go to Styles and Hart, there are remnants of all manner of, brooks, of broken bricks there. So the history is there. And the management plan, you can read the history in that. Like I said, you can get these plans at the library, and they are on the town website, only they're a little bit hard to find. That will be fixed once different people start to squawk loudly. Kitty, um, is, um, oh, is, uh, is Sal's, is it, is it, correct me if I'm wrong, but is Sal's and Hart our biggest park, or is that uh, Carver's Ponds? Sal's and Hart. Um, Sal's and Hart might be the biggest in acreage, yes. and definitely with what Michael can share, he's still in the room. 70 acres. It's, it's approximately 70 acres with a mile of riverfront for water trails. And it's right across from where the Town River Landing will be. Now, there's already the canoe launch put in by, sponsored by the Nucatessen Greenway a Natural Resources Trust people and the Public Access Board with the permission of the then former Board of Selectmen. That's already there. But the vision and the dream would be to have a bridge pedestrian bridge that would go from the Town River Landing across the Town River and up into that park. And at one point, the land trust was in the process of having that designed, and we did go as far as having soil borings and some other things done. So there is a little bit of the initial work that started. And just to help you with visioning, you know, does anyone here remember having the Sears and Robic Wish Book catalog? Okay, here's your Sears and Roebuck wish book. <laughs> this, is, this is so that you can start to dream about some of the things that are possible. Um, so those are bridges in there. Now, also, just so you'll have an idea, these, these parklands that we have are seeped in history. They're seeped in archaeological things. There's native history here. There's uh, industrial history here. There's the colonial history here. The Tom River is the first area of inland settlement from Plymouth Colony. And they were here as early as 1639, maybe up in the West Bridgewater area, but that was still all the original Bridgewater um, territory. So what I was chatting about, the um, Styles and Hart, this is a copy of a ticket that I happened across 
and this is what some of the um, fairgrounds material was like, so that you bought a ticket to be a member and to go to the event. This can go around too. Twitch. And if I don't see it, I don't. Who do you? Who's going to steal this? Raise your hand. <laughs> anyway, I. All right, Amber can steal it. <laughs> Autumn can steal it. <laughs> um, and here's a little brochure that's also onto the back of that plastic map that's going around on the Town River Landing. And you can see how long ago we worked on this. And also, we have comments in here from the Bridgewater Board of Selectmen, Herbie Lemon, from Carlton Hunt, PhD, Master Plan Implementation. We have comments here from Sue McComb at the university and people from a land trust. And the National Park Service has also endorsed what we're doing. So that can go around. Just keep passing them around, and I, I don't care to get them back. As you know, I am downsizing at home. I'm getting rid of clutter, and you guys are inheriting it. The next park, the next park after Styles and Hart, I, I should mention, we do have a grant that's coming in. And there is some activity with CPA funding. And so the community is picking up another five acres on um, the Broad Street area that will then be transformed into um, handicap accessible parking, probably near one of the ponds that are inland that, that's, inland, that's um, a result of the brick industry. So Styles and Heart is an awesome thing to have in the very center of town. There is a pedestrian access up on High Street. Right now, it's, a, it's the only place on the road that has a guardrail there, so you can't park. Um, and then the, the trail goes down from there to the ponds. And like I had shown Harry with that slip I gave him, it was uh, probably 12 or 13 years ago that the AmeriCorps were here, and they put in a trail that went from the river all the way up to the ponds, but it's overgrown for lack of um, TLC. The next trail, to, uh, the next parkland down was also bought with self-help money or one of the state grants. That's Tuckerwood. I think the person who has been minding that area is here, but I don't know whether she wishes to identify herself. Just say hello, Maureen. Maureen has done a fantastic job for years and years and years and years. She needs help. I don't mean she needs help. I mean she needs help at the park. <laughs> Do you have any comments that you would like to say about that right now? Uh, just, just as as uh, you said that uh, it would be nice to have some organization with us. It's just splintered, and uh, we definitely need some cohesiveness with it all. Right, and so that we definitely. So the chief steward is like waiting for a wanted child. <laughs> the next parkland down, oh, I didn't, I didn't mention the history of that you'll find, but that was farmland that was in one family, and it was um, purchased by the town. It's also on the river corridor, so that that's another place you can start kayak down, canoe down. And it's, it doesn't have a really good egress access to get out onto the river, but, but you can still go by it. And who knows what the possibilities are once it's really looked at again. The next one down from that, um, let's see, talk about, oh. Do you want to know a secret now, or do you want me to wait until the next meeting? Oh, we want to know. <laughs> you can tell but, us now. It's not going to make us wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have fairly good information I, it's not that you, it's not, the ultrasound shows that there's a live, liveliness there, but it's, it's not big enough yet to know if it's a boy or a girl, okay? So envision the Town River coming down and the Mapfield River coming down right where the Taunton River is, and envision on the west side or the side that goes up the hill towards the town, envision a, a picnic area and canoe launch known as Murphy's Landing. It's in the works. It will be a while, but that's an awesome thing because then we would have the um, access at the Ironworks, access at 
Town River Landing, and then Axis at Murphy's Landing. And then we travel further down on the Taunton River and goes around the bend by Auburn Street, where all of that nice protected land is. And by this time, we're in um, Council of Fred's domain. <laughs> then when you keep going down around the Taunton River, you'll come to the Old State Farm. That can launch an axis has just been rehabbed by a Boy Scout as an Eagle project. Um, and there is an, an idea. It's embryonic. It's not chipped in stone yet. But it would be awesome to have from the Old State Farm canoe launch area going out to Auburn Street all along the river, maybe two miles of a hike, a little trail along the berm of the river called the Cumberland Gap. Um, it's a possibility. Who knows? And there's going to be so many more people in that area. That might be something that is a sought-after connection to the rest of what we're doing. The last one down is at Titicut. Um, it's... I'm so glad he's doing that over there, because I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. And for him to do that, it works out well. That's Scott and, and Carlton. Um, Titicut was one farm of about 33 acres. And in 1976 or thereabouts, the town was able to get its first conservation land grant, and they bought that. But part of the acreage is in Bristol County and in the town of Rainham. And because of it being split, it had to be bought by one entity. And then the two towns had made arrangements with each other that Rainham would then reimburse Bridgewater for their seven acres. And um, we would have the 26 acres or thereabouts that would be in Bridgewater, and they would have the other in theirs. And everything is signed someplace in my papers. Maybe next time I'll have found them, I'll bring them and donate them to this worthy cause. Our copies of the, of the letters, that was before email, copies of the letters where they agreed to all of this, and Rainham was all set, and Bridgewater was all set, and the land was purchased, and the deeds were signed. On, Rainham never appropriated the money, so we still have the seven acres. And there's also other property there that is not part of the park, but it's next to the park. So that's something worthy to look into. Um, I don't see the counselor for that precinct here. But that's something that the people that take on Titicate can look at. Um, Carver's Pond, that's the sixth parkland, and it's inland. But if you took a hike along what we call the Nucatessen Greenway, or if you paddled the Nucatessen Greenway, you can go through the university from Stiles and Hart and Town River Landing and get over to Carver's Pond. We've had an awesome person there doing a lot of renovation with the help of volunteers, and his family has put a lot of money into that. It's been in accordance with the guidance documents. So we have a little brochure that they put together, and we have another fact thing. They've done work in the schools. Harvest Pond is very heavily used. You can keep those passed on. And it's another one that's kind of in the downtown. Now, all six of these parklands and the Town River Landing are part of what our land trust had thought would be an awesome outdoor classroom. And we want to be able to foster and preserve the history, the archaeology, native history, and all of the different things. But also culture and also art and also neat things that go along with say, the architecture in the center of town and what you find on the university campus with some of the sculpture that's being put out around that's also part of where we can walk as a community. It's all connected, and it needs to be like a... Well, if you had a necklace and you had all of these little baubles um, an inch and a half in pot, then it would be a necklace of fine jewels, right? So if we put it all together with like-minded discipline and with... Um, common signage and with ideal management and stuff, then we have more than just the five acres here and 10 acres there and et cetera. So right now with what we've talked about or I've babbled about, like a brook, right? <laughs> um, are just the first layer 
of what, is the, what will be the easiest to then use. I didn't mention Wyman Meadow. We have a challenge with Wyman Meadow, but no problems, just challenges and opportunity. Okay? Um, when Wyman Meadow was bought, again, through some of the self-help money back, I believe, in 2000, it was for water supply and for conservation. And one of the reasons that the state put up the money for their portion of it, I think 68% of the asking price, was because of its bucolic vista as you drove along the blacktop roadway and looked down over the rolling hills with all of these neat Holsteins that were roaming around. And now that has changed drastically, and you would never recognize it as a bucolic vista. And that's one of the difficult things, because there's not adequate or user-friendly parking. Um, there needs to be a real review of how that property is being used and what can be done to make it, again, user-friendly. And there are some ideas and suggestions that are, that are out there, so that's something that the new group can explore as they get going. Um, who can tell me what the six parks are? <laughs> they're right on the map. Yeah, yeah they're, they're right on the map. You, you know what they are. Iron sure. <laughs> Good boy. Steels and Hot. Styles and Hot. Styles right. and Hot, sorry. Yeah, Tucker Wood, Carver's Bond. Wayman Meadow. Good boy. Good boy. You give people. Yeah. Good. So you do, have, you do have an idea now. The idea is where are they? Exactly. How do you get to them? What is the parking like? Is the signage? When are they open? What are the rules? Um, the town has on its website a permission slip or a request to use it if it is after hours. The parklands are open from sunrise to sunset. You have to say sunrise to sunset, not dawn to dusk, because sunrise to sunset is time specific. And there's always somebody that will argue if you say dawn to dusk. It's mm -hmm. a little bit more flexible. Now, you can't say you can go camping there, because then people roll in with RVs and they want super, sewer hookups. You have to say tenting. Some of these parklands allow tenting. Some of these parklands are suitable for horseback riding. Some are not. Some are suitable for um, picnicking, bird walking, watching, um, walking your dog on a leash with your favorite little bag in your back pocket. Um, there's so many things that we have that we just don't realize that we can use, and it's a matter of this 20-year-old house of doing an inspection, getting it reorganized, maybe a little paint and paper, or shears and a saw. But that has to be in rhythm with what's in the guidance plans. The guidance plans to be updated, they're part of the open space and rec plan, which is part of the master plan, which is the blueprint for community development that we all knew about, right? Everyone has memorized that, right? I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something that we have as a community. It's part of community, so it's not done willy-nilly with 10 acres over here and 5 acres over here that who knows what they look like or how they fit together and no one knows about them. And then the trails all get grown over and, you know, that would never happen here, right? <laughs> here is um, the product of an internship at the university from now probably four years ago. If anyone wants a copy of this, they can keep that. And um, I want to thank, personally, several people that helped with props for tonight. Um, some of you might have seen a flyer that was out with a sketch on the top and the map on the bottom. This is an awesome little sketch that was done by somebody in this room who might not want to be identified. But it tells the story as to, for years, we were walking parks and trails, walking down a dark tunnel, and now there's a light at the end of the tunnel that says, hired staff, and it's called Sustainable Way. So I'll pass that around just so you can have a better look at it. And if the individual cares to identify herself in the red shirt, then that's all right with me, too. <laughs> um, Impressive. Let's see. Oh, Ironworks. Does anyone want a map? No, this is an Ironworks. Styles and, this is Styles and Hot and what can be the, um, 
Okay, I'm looking at it upside down. I know what it is because I brought it specifically. Yeah. This is the, yeah, Styles and Hot Parkland. If anyone would like this, they may have this. Oh, look who's got his hands out. <laughs> okay, that's most of my um, handouts. Did I, did I tell you what this is? Nakates and Greenway. You know what the motto is for our Nakates and Greenway? It's where history and nature meet. Does anyone know what Nakatessant means? It's on our town seal, down one side of the banner, and the Satucket goes up the other side. So it has to be important to the community. What does Nakatessant mean? You told me that. In our Algonquin language, they read it from this way to that way. Anything ending in E or E T T, I mean E T or E T T, means place off. So this is place of wolves in the woods. Now think of what it was like here in colonial days for anything that you might have read. Um, knowing that European settlers were in this region as early as, say, um, 1640. And then you find the first few maps. What are the names of the homesteads? But Wolf Trap Hill and Wolf Trap Alley or whatever. So immediately the cultural conflict from those that had lived here in harmony with their culture and their surrounds for centuries, and people who had been here for two decades that were already altering it. Um, so some of the places might have this little emblem. You might see it. Um, you might not see it. We might never get any up. It depends on who volunteers. Just because you're here, it doesn't mean that you have to volunteer. <laughs> but on the other hand, <laughs> there are many things that you could do. You might choose one of these parklands that's your favorite and in passion. You might choose to help out on the Conservation Commission. You might choose to help out on the Open Space Committee. Or you might even choose to want to work with some of us oldsters. Oh, James, I'm sorry I said that. <laughs> some of us senior members from the land trust that really want to get on the porch and rock a bay. <laughs> so, but in order to have a viable 501c3, we have certain requirements that we have to keep up with too. So there's plenty of opportunity if you would like more involvement. Now the other thing is um, we have this other works, workshop or orientation session coming up in November, the Thursday before Thanksgiving. And at that time, we would like to talk a little bit about um, pending changes on High Street near the opening of Ironworks, which would include changes in the dam, changes in the bridge, a possibility of the Bay Circuit Trail, then getting a little bit more of their footage. You know, the Bay Circuit Trail, I didn't mention that, but that's for the next session. But just as a point of information, do you know what it is? Where it is? I thought I had something on that, but maybe I left it somewhere. Um, Bay Circuit Trail is around 200 miles long. It starts up at Plum Island, and it circumvents the whole of Boston, and it comes down through Easton, 138, cuts through under the power lines to um, uh, Maple Street up in the Hockamock Swamp, and then it goes up and around some places. It ends up in Bridgewater at ironworks and then it bumps over to East Bridgewater. The goal would be to have most of that trail off-road so that you have a more serene hiking experience than just walking along a blacktop with people giving you hand gestures and things. Um, so that the Bay Circuit Trail has partnered up with the Appalachian Mountain Club or AMC and they have some awesome ideas so we'll talk about that a little bit. We'll just mention a little bit with the tot lots that have been under, um, well, it's been in the headlines lately. We'll talk a little bit about the, the need for a dog park or not to have a dog park. And then there's also the tool park with this endowment of $100,000. Where's that money? And also, um, Joe Starr's trail work out behind the softball fields in the police station. 
And there's also the um, Jenny Leonard Park up off of Cherry Street. And how does this all connect together into our community? What about the trail that's at the senior center that needs help? The senior center has a little nature trail that's out and around that was an Eagle Scout project probably 12 years ago, and it's like our one that was done with AmeriCorps where nobody knows exactly where it is, but you find benches out in the woods. So we have a lot of places that we can fix up for our own um, well-being and, ent and entertainment and our own um, experience. Healthy trails and parks, or parks and trails, indicate a healthy community. A healthy community is where people want to live and to work. To work, they want to have their businesses close by. It could be an economic stimulus to have. It could be. This downtown with the historical area or the downtown business district and have the town river landing so that it's user-friendly as a hub right in the, where the food places are and where the university Students and faculty and parents can go paddle on the river, hike up the little roadway, uh, hike up through the paths. Something to do here. Um, there's so many different things that we can do with what we have, and then we can also identify what else we would like to do more with it. But so this being the first phase of what we've talked about tonight, and then at the next time we'll talk about some of the other things that the town already owns the land on, with it indicated that it's supposed to be open space conservation. There's another conservation area up off of North Street, right by um, 104. We don't use that. It has some restrictions there as to how and what, but still, it's something else that we have invested in. So um, I have here, if you'd like to look at them, the guidance documents, these cannot disappear. Um, but anything else that I've gotten here, this is a, a, one of the old think tanks that we did probably when the Mayflower landed. If anyone would like this, they may have that. And then I had talked to you about having, um, you're going to love this. <laughs> oh, uh, back a long time ago, the Nucket the, um, <laughs> And our TV and our TV had put together a set of these. There's only a few here, but you're welcome to those. They have to be updated because things have changed. Is there any chance, with, like the last? Is there any chance with the last ten minutes or something with all these? I don't know what you're saying. Can't hear me. I can hear you, but I don't know what it is. Okay, with the last ten minutes that we've got, we possibly asked this incredible. A group of invested people, just what some of their ideas are. That's and exactly. Have that for a kickoff for next time. And what people might be committed that they would like to start on. If I th it's too early to ask for a commitment. Really, what you need to do is on your own go to find some of these places and meander through there. Yeah. Okay, and then let's get their idea. Let's can we just get people together? I would love to know what people are looking for when we say parks because that's part of what will shape how this works. Um, so you'll be thinking of something you'd like to share, and here is your Christmas wish book from Sears and Robert. <laughs> I don't want these back. Kitty, while you're passing that out, I want to put a plug in for the comprehensive master plan update that we are looking at open space and rec. We are looking for your, we're going to be coming out with uh, uh, in the next couple of months. So, I would encourage everybody here to participate in that process when we have a public meeting. Uh, the other two are comments on dams. Harbor Dam is a dam that needs repair. And we've had some engineering studies on it. So whoever the stewards out there, they need to be aware, the town needs to be aware that we need to invest in making that dam safe because it first it goes all the way down uh, to the South Road into the river. And there's the High Street Dam is, was first established in 1694. Uh, it was uh, repaired and upgraded in 1904 in six weeks. Uh, and it's a really important part of that park. So that's the comments I want to Particularly important is the CBC uh, update plan. I've got the mic here. I'm grateful that you brought that up. I have one other comment. There were several people that emailed me that they were not able to come tonight, but they were interested. 
And I was mumbling as well. Oh, not, not here. <laughs> okay. Um, it's mumbling. George Reiser sent in some comments about the access to Carver's Pond. So that those are his thoughts, and you may have that. Um, Kitty, do you want to use this? It looks like a little bit more powerful. Say what? Speak. This is a little bit more powerful. It's speak. actually broadcasting inside here. The other one's for the TV. So I, I've always wanted two mics. <laughs> hey, I'm not going down that road. <laughs> We need some questions. We need some thoughts. Um, we have so many possibilities here. Um, you look like a man that might have something to say. Not you? Oh, all right. I don't want any of these books back, but those give you ideas. It's very costly, the things in those books, but that's what the Sears and Roebuck Wish Book was. But we could somehow, if you get these ideas out of these pack books, then maybe we could make them or whatever. Now, um, one thing as we start, does anyone else have a plug that they would like to say? Well, there's a, a good question over here. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my question was just about the uh, stewardship uh, regarding the Town River. Uh, who is the in charge, I guess, of the jurisdiction from the Town River leading up to Taunton River. I know you guys are in charge of that and taking care of that river, but um, you know, just in my experience in meandering, uh, my brother and I took a trip down and we started at Nip and Nick it, and we went and we pulled out at Battleship Cove in Fall River. So it was a great trip. Um, the Town River was probably the most challenging portion with blowdowns and just getting right. through there on a canoe is very difficult. So I'm just wondering who's in charge or who would be. In there is no one in charge. Okay. What that is is that. People have ownership to the center of the river, usually by deed. If a blowdown happens, and no one hears it fall, did it fall? Um, if a blowdown happens and it's causing a problem, then people would have to take care of it. But do you have to work with the Conservation Commission on that? And also, there has to be thought as to how it's going to be taken care of. It's not like you know, Joe Sixpack out there with a chainsaw and his buddies, and you're going to cut firewood. Because each of those blowdowns are habitat for the creatures that live along that area. We are part of the creatures that want to live there, so we need to be included. But it's only cutting a little area through. Um, there are several different videos that I have that somehow I can share with Steve, and they can be up wherever it's appropriate. But right now, as far as river cleanup is concerned, the state um, river people no longer refer to it as a river cleanup. They call it river management. It's, river, it's a, a, a natural cleanup, but it's in April from Earth Day, and that's when people pick up the hand trash and stuff like that. There's more of a science now to what is done on the river. That's how, it's funny, but that's one of the first things that happened when the Taunton River watershed started. It was on a Saturday, oh, the gorilla is here. It just dawned on me when I looked up, and she looks embarrassed. It was Saturday, July 24th, I think in 1988. And it was the first river cleanup that we had ever had, and we called it a river cleanup. It was then Fernandes, that's where the Burlington Coat Factory is, and all of these people showed up with canoes and chainsaws and boots. And it was awesome. There was some company that donated a dumpster, and people had their canoes sort of tethered together, so it was more like a, a platform. And there was a little bit of work going up and down with clippers to take some of the low hangers off the bushes so you could still go through. And there were tires brought out, and there were... Um, Shopping carts. Shopping carts, and there were toilet bowls mm -hmm. and hot water tanks, and everything was the same color brown that we have in our tea colored river. Mm -hmm. And then the worst and funniest and saddest part was we had put balloons out on the street on Route 18 so that people would know to go down behind what was then um, Fernandes, and that was where we were meeting. So this old lady comes down in this old jalopy that looked like it came out of a Bonnie and Clyde movie. 
and wish they had bullet holes, she had rust. You could only see the top of her head over the steering wheel in her hands. And she came chugging down, and she was wearing all of her clothes, and everything in her car looked like that's where she lived. There were laundry baskets and paper bags. And she saw the stack of things that we had, which were all (laughs) brown tires and all brown toilet bowls and water tanks and bicycle frames. And she gets out and she says, is this a yard sale? <laughs> so, you know, I said, gee, lady, no. But you can yes, have anything there you want. <laughs> Five bucks. So this is a lot of fun. And another thing, when you talk about river cleanup, and I don't want to minimize your concern because it is a concern, if you ever plan one, plan only a long morning because after people get out to have lunch, they're not going to go back in and get dirty again. Kitty? It just doesn't work. Can you speak a little bit about the joint committee with West Bridgewater and Bridgewater, the Town River Fisheries the Committee? The Nucatessen Greenway. It's the Town River, which I just told you was where um, our place of wolves in the woods, and some of the old histories say um, they talk about the, Nuc- the Nucatessen as the wolf area and where the Bay Circuit Trail comes in. So the Bay Circuit Trail running along and in between and the Town River um, are what we call the Nucatessen Greenway. It's only in West Bridgewater and Bridgewater. They have parks and trails that are being put together. Right now that community is in process of doing their open space, up play, their update. And so right now they're not real active, but I think they do have an Eagle Scout project that will be adding a canoe launch soon along River Street. Um, uh oh. <laughs> Kitty, I think Gina wants to say Oh, I do you want me to tell them about the gorilla? That river cleanup. <laughs> that river cleanup. Three minutes, okay. I'll do this in ten seconds. That we had a gorilla on the banks of the river for that river cleanup, and she was waiting and waiting for the canoes to go down so she could ride them. She ate a banana, she walked around, they didn't come, and then she had to make a pit stop and they went by. (laughs) And we have a lot of fun with this. Uh, Questions? It doesn't work. If it's green. Is it set? Okay, a couple of things. Yes, I have a the old ladies when she was talking about things like old lady, the, the older lady that, that stuck. I thought you were calling me that. That's okay. Uh, just a couple things. My my vision for the, the parks, and I've been on parks and, and, and rec, formerly recreation commission for, I hate to say how many years, but my vision is to have all the parks cleared up, accessible for people, trails. I like to walk. Um, I don't want to have to go to Borderland or Ingham or somewhere. They have the trails cleared, <clears throat> nice trails, safe trails, because I don't like to be off on trails out um, by myself. I have been walking some of the parks. We did Jenny Leonard, we did um, Hitterkit, and they're interesting. Um, so I would like to see that cleared up. Obviously, if it's under recreation, we have one, one employee, so we, we drastically need help. And I think the stewards, the steward that's coming will be, be wonderful. Um, my, other, my other thing, I would like to make a plug for community preservation. We have to, I'm chair of community preservation, we have a few members here tonight too. We have to, by state statute, do a community preservation plan update every five years. This is our fifth year. We're in the process of doing it. I encourage everybody, to come on Thursday, Time, December, December 5th, 5th, right, okay. At 7 o'clock right. here. At 7 o'clock, the same room, we will present the plan, um, take comments from, from people. So I encourage everybody to come back on that night. I know there's a lot of things going on. It's hitting the, the holiday season. But just to get input from people, I think from people in the room, it's a wealth of information. I do encourage people to come for that night. Thank you.